Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thank you for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. I know that you spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm very excited to welcome my special guests to the show today. I have Betsy Polk and Maggie Ellis Chodas here today, and I'm really excited to talk to you two about your wonderful new book, Power Through Partnership. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks, Caroline. We're looking forward to this conversation. We're going to have a juicy conversation, ladies. Let me tell the audience a little bit about you. Inspired by a friendship that began in high school English class, Betsy Polk and Maggie Ellis Chotis teamed up in 2003 to create the Mulberry Partners, a consulting practice that helps individuals, teams, and organizations figure out how to strengthen collaboration improve communication, resolve conflict, and achieve goals that stick. So after a few years of working together, Betsy and Maggie realized they were gaining great benefits from the flexibility it took to lead work and life on their own terms to the sheer happiness of doing work they enjoyed together. So Betsy and Maggie reached out to 125 other women business partners and learned that they were achieving similar advantages. Power Through Partnership, Betsy and Maggie's first book, celebrates the power that comes from women working together while navigating the road past myths and pitfalls to creating and sustaining healthy partnerships. And ladies, you are talking my language. I think amazing things happen when women come together. So I'd love to unpack this story. How did the book begin, right? Tell me a little bit more about starting Mulberry Partners and then what led to the evolution of writing Power Through Partnership. Thank you, Caroline. This is Betsy. And Maggie and I, as you mentioned in your intro, Maggie and I have been friends since high school. Um, We long talked about working together someday. Maggie's career road led her in the direction of education and mine led in the direction of organization development consulting. So we we knew we wanted to work together. and We hadn't quite figured out how yet. And then um, circumstance landed us in the same place, in the same area code after many years of not being in the same location. We were, we both had young, very young children at the time. We were both kind of figuring out our next acts. And we were, as we often did, having a long marathon conversation, phone conversation one day. And um, in that conversation, we were kind of imagining what was next. And it it occurred to us that maybe this was the time that we worked together. But then we thought, well, no, I want to do this. I want to do that. Maybe it's not time yet. Maggie's mom is a therapist. And Maggie said, you know, my mother always says that women often think they need one more thing. They need one more degree. They need one more something, one more credential before they're ready to do whatever it is they really want to do. And then Maggie said, you know what? Maybe we have what we need right now. And with that, our consulting practice, the Mulberry Partners, was born, and we we reached we started working together, started reaching out to clients, and found that we really loved our work together, and that's what led to the book. We wondered if our work together was we were enjoying it that much because it was a partnership, or because we were just lucky, or what was it? So that led us to reach out to other women in partnership to find out that the benefits we were achieving, many of the ones you mentioned, were benefits that many women working together were achieving together. I love that. I love that you've been really friends for such a good long time. And, and this is a, a wonderful way to come together, right, and celebrate your strengths collectively and individually. And thanks for sharing the one more thing concept. I think that's really true. You know, quite often women are waiting for that perfection moment to happen. And, and frankly, it just never does. And that's okay. That's right. right. We can spend our whole lives. Yeah. The, the next big thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. What's, what's perfect? So, so let me ask both of you, and, and I'd love, Maggie, to hear from you as well on this. Writing a book together is tough, and I can tell you that from personal experience. I've written um, a book and a second edition of the same book alone, and now I'm venturing out on a co-authorship journey, and I treasure and adore my co-author, but there are different challenges of being a co-author than a solo writer. So tell me about your journey. 
Yes, um, we we had it has been a journey, and what we've had to figure out through that process. Both Betsy and I love to write. Um, we were both English majors in college, and have always enjoyed writing. And we we agree with you. Writing a book together has has it. You've got we. It took us a while to find our rhythm, and yeah. it's one of the one of the things that we've learned about successful partnerships is role clarification. You know. Yeah. For, to know what their contributions are, what their what their strengths are, what their complementary skills are, and work to those strengths. And sometimes that means really dealing with whatever the ego is that is in the middle of whatever's happening. Um, so Betsy and I, we we tried both of us writing, um, they, you know, both being lead authors and writing everything together. Um, huh. We that was <laughs> how'd that go. <laughs> We tried rewriting each other's words yeah. over and over again. I mean, we, we and then we finally hit our rhythm where uh, Betsy would take the the lead on the chapters, and then I would come in and fill fill in and refine and and, and do the research and do a, and lot do things, a lot of things, a lot of the research pieces, and then and then we would kind of take it from there. But it it definitely took us took us some time to find our rhythm. Now that we found it. Um, we were we we're thrilled with our approach, but we we had to be willing to look at doing things a little bit differently than the, the way that we've worked in other parts of our business. Mm-hmm. Nicely done. Is it is it tricky because you're also friends, you know, dear lifelong friends, to have those fierce conversations and and those moments of total transparency? Now that you're working, you know, in a career relationship as well. Well, we found that if we don't have those tough conversations, they come out some way, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right before a big meeting. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. right. Some of it's the worst time. So we just learned that we have to, you know, yeah. and we started our partnership, but very aware of our friendship and very aware of how precious our friendship was to us. And so we did a lot of talking. In fact, we, we made the commitment to spend a really long chunk of time focusing on how to preserve our friendship, how to build a solid infrastructure before we started taking on clients. Um, so we, we talked through what if scenarios, we imagine the worst possibilities, we at, we uh, appoint and we kind of identified someone who could be our mediator if ever we needed one. And we really, really tried to think and talk through as the trickiest scenarios so that we would be ready for them if, if and when they ever occurred. And I think that is a key to our ability to really talk through pretty much anything now. Good for uh, you. Good for it, you. Yeah. It's sometimes, but we, we can do it and we can do it in a way that where we can actually call things out before they even happen sometimes. And we've had a lot of practice. I mean, we've been in business since 2003 and right. we, every, you know, it, it was hard at first. I would, I, I think to oh, have yeah. those honest yeah. conversations it's really hard now. It's not, you know, it's not that it's always fun, but it's not, Hard anymore. I mean, right. we know how to check in and we know how to kind of really quickly get to what the heart of things are as opposed to, you know, getting getting through hurt feelings right, and that right. sort of thing. But we've and, and one of the things that we've found that is that it's really crucial for women don't necessarily think um, naturally about setting up those rules of engagement when yeah. they go into a business a partnership or any kind of endeavor um, that that requires an equal amount from both of them. And so we learned this um, from our interviews with the women who wrote the nanny diaries. They say, you know, this is not a, a going out to lunch shopping sort of relationship. You really have to lay out the rules of engagement and what, how you're going to deal with these things in order to be able to bring the best of, of both people to the, to the actual entity. And I just wanted to call out one real world example as well. And just to bring it on home, um, the other day, you know, here we are in the thick of this book launch. We're figuring it out. We've never done this before. You know, it, a lot is going on all at one time, and we were kind of getting into a little bit of a, a little bit of a tug of war. It wasn't anything major. I don't think we ever would have noticed it in the past, but it was, you know, it was definitely there. And Maggie said, "Okay, we're in a lot of stress. This is prime opportunity for us to get into a tug of war. Let's just be aware of the fact that this could happen, and be aware of the fact that." of how we're going to, and I am using my hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, there's got to be a visual there, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, but just to be aware of the, the tension is likely right now, and that's okay. And so as soon as she said it, it kind of took away the tension because we were able to say, yeah, here it is. 
and we know this and we can get past this. Yeah. I, I so appreciate your, your candor about that because you're right. You've got to have role clarification and then the tug of war situation too, you know, you put the egos on the table and you say, okay, let's, let's get it out there. Right. Instead of having the elephant in the room, let's, let's deal with it head on. So well done. Well done. Ladies, tell me besides the fact that you are vibrant professional women, why the focus on women in partnership? Well, one of the things that we, we had to really think about that, because when we started working on this book, we started we started the book thinking about partnership for for everyone, um, why partnership itself is a, is a great way of working. And we absolutely still believe that. In fact, men have long taken advantage of partnership. And when you start looking for the men you see out there who are working in partnership, you'll you'll start to see them everywhere from Lewis and Clark to Watson and Crick to mm -hmm. the founders of Google, Abbott Costello, the Weinstein brothers. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. But when we, we really start thinking about, well, where are the women in partnership? That's a very small and usually fic fictitious list from Laverne and Shirley to Thelma and Louise, yeah, you know, the ones, right. the ones who are top of mind partners. And right. so, and what, what has led us on this path is thinking that partnership in and of itself is a strong, powerful way to work. I mean, just having more people engaged in an endeavor brings more strength to it, brings more financial um, success to it. There's even, there's a statistic that we found recently that shows that um, you know, if you have partners involved in a business, they're more likely to make more money. It's more likely to be sustainable. And yet women, only 89% of, um, well, no, let me, let me dial that back. Only 69% of women in, in business have, I just totally botched that statistic. 89% of businesses owned entirely by women have only one owner. Okay. Okay. Sixty-nine percent for entirely owned men, male business. So women have a lot to learn from building that partnership, finding the collaboration to to increase the entity's success. And women have uh, so many skills that lend themselves naturally to partnership in terms of collaboration and caring about relationship and taking the time and commitment to working things out within and really loving to work in a collaborative um, partnership. So we, we that's been a bit of a journey for us too, from thinking about partnership in general and the benefits of partnership in general, which are indeed there, to thinking about women in particular and what we can gain from working to working with each other right now. So can you name something specific, ladies, about how you have benefited from your partnership, you know, the Mulberry Partners? I mean, how, how, what, what has been a, a direct result of your partnership that you've benefited from? You know, I think we've really, well, I, I can speak for myself. I have really learned more about myself. <laughs> I have learned how to be a better partner. One thing that we discovered through all this is that um, – there's a stretchability to partnership. There's kind of a rubber band theory aspect of it yeah. where a really strong partnership is not one that maybe stays together forever. You know, a lot of the women we interviewed said invariably, oh, well, partnership is like a marriage. And we don't believe that it is because in a partnership, the stronger the partnership, the more it can stretch. The mm. more partners can go out and collaborate with other people and take the skills, the collaborative skills, the the um, learnings they've gained from those comp complementary skills, everything, they can take those out and enrich other collaborations. And then they can come back to their original collaboration and enrich it all the more and get out of, get even more out of it. So I think what we've, one of the things I've learned is how to be a better partner, a better person, um, and a more self-aware one. And, you know, cause I can, you know, I can't kid myself about my, my strengths or my weaknesses. Right. Right. Them, you know, I really love your rubber band theory and the give and take and the stretch concept, right? Because again, I think sometimes women are immobilized by trying to be so perfect or so specific and you've got to be nimble. That's a word that I really enjoy and aspire to be nimble on a regular basis, right? Sometimes we get into uh, such structure that we're not willing to be innovative and 
to change, right? And and that flexibility, I think, is part of being a good partner. Right, yeah, right. So you talked so beautifully about the benefits. There are pitfalls, right? So how do women, what are they? And how do women avoid these pitfalls in partnership? Well, one I would throw out, and I was just thinking about when you were saying that and thinking about this earlier, when we were talking about the time we spent talking through our partnership and thinking through scenarios, that can also be a downfall. Because I think as women, we can get caught in a what if trap. What if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? And then we get paralyzed and we don't do anything. Yeah. So we've talked to so many would-be partners, women who have said, I'd love to work with another woman. I think, or, and I'd love to be a partner, but I'm terrified about it. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, a result of that what if, that quest for perfection that you mentioned so much earlier. So that is a pitfall. Um, there also, pitfalls. Well, also this uh, fear of conflict. We talked about that mm-hmm. earlier. Um, and you know, as women, oftentimes we are socialized, well, as girls really, to not deal with conflict directly. And so there might be, we might be encouraged to think about resolving conflict sort of through underground um, means. Uh, and really, learning how to deal with the conflict more directly is something that is it, it is just so essential to a healthy partnership. And and so women sometimes will not step into that level of a relationship because they're afraid of, of having to, to to deal with the conflict. Interesting. Ladies, what advice would you give to other women listening who are considering working together but are maybe a little fearful or concerned? Well, you know, we get this competing message from, as we grow up. And the message is, oh, well, a woman should be your best friend. She, you should rely. Oh, yeah. I mean, we see commercials. We see Hallmark commercials. We see movies, best buddy movies. You know, we're always surrounded by this notion of women's friendship. But then we get this completely opposite message about women working together. Oh, it's a recipe for a cat fight. Oh, it's <laughs> terrible. You know, Carol Sandberg has this great line, you know, the media loves nothing more than a, a cat fight. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so we get these competing issues. And I, we would say... Go out there and partner. Go out there and take what you really like about working with your, or being, about the relationship you have with your sister, your mother, your colleague, your coworker, even your former competitor or your current one, into a real endeavor. Um, Check out, you know, sit down and talk it through. Make sure that you share a vision. Make sure you have those complementary skills and figure out what the gaps are that you need to fill. Check out the values that you hold between you. But Make sure you like each other. You don't have to be best friends at all. But you have to, I think with women, it is important to have a compatibility factor. Um, We found that in the partners we've interviewed. We found that from ourselves. But those factors are there. Explore this idea. Don't don't get yourself afraid of it. What else, Maggie? Yeah, and and then know, this as we were talking about earlier with the um, being nimble, being know that you can shape it to make it what you yeah. want it to be. Yeah. So, I mean, nowadays when Betsy and I hit some sort of big problem and we're trying to figure out how we're going to get through it, I mean, we will spend some time analyzing and then we will just take a pause and say, you know what, we're, we will figure this yeah. out. We know we will figure this yeah. out. We might not figure it all out today. It might take us, you know, well, if it might be something that has to, we have to chew on for a little while. But we know we'll figure it out because we've come through so many yeah. things together and we always come back to the partnership and we always figure out, yeah. you know, that yeah. that's that's kind of the, the wellspring from which we look at work. Um, mm-hmm. And we go out and we come back. We go out and we come back. And that's the beauty of that rubber band theory in action. Yeah. And that's the greatest gift of partnership is knowing we, knowing that we're not in it alone, that we've got yeah. to, you know, that we trust each other, that I'm. You know, I look at Maggie, I'm like, I'm so lucky that I got this really smart woman and we're working together and we're figuring it out. That's a gift. That's awesome. Oh, I can, I can hear the enthusiasm and the respect in your voices. And I so appreciate you. You are both an inspiration. Ladies, let's talk about how we can buy the book, Power Through Partnership. Yes. Uh, Yes. (laughs) We'd love for you to buy the book. Yes. Um, Tell us, tell us how. It is on Amazon and, um, and on, um, Indie Bound. Indie Indie Bound. Bound. Um, We would love, November 3rd is our official launch date. So depending on um, scheduling, um, we would love for people to go out and buy it on November. 
Absolutely. Let's buy it on the launch date. That's exciting. So you're in full book tour mode. Tell us how we can find you online and also in the social media sphere, because I know you're you're both very active in that space. Our, our book book website is Power Through Partnership. That's T-H-R-U partnership.com and that is alive and well at this point and we're also on Facebook chock full of good stuff and we're also on Facebook at Betsy and Maggie or you can people can just search for power through partnership and at Twitter we're and we're on Twitter at um, powership is our handle Wonderful. Well, Betsy and Maggie, I wish you great success with the new book. What a joy to have you on. You are indeed an inspiration to all of us. And uh, I thank you so much for your sound wisdom. And I wish you great success on this wonderful new book journey. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank this you, is a Caroline. great program, Caroline. We're thrilled to be on it. Thank well, you. thank you both. You take good care. And I hope we meet in person sometime soon. I look forward to that. Okay. Take good care. And I want to thank our listeners for tuning into Your Working Life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.